Hello, Slicey Dicers. Welcome to Bruise and Blades for July 12th of 2020. It's the quiz show. No one's going to get that reference, but uh, I don't care. Uh, yes, we are going to do the quiz show. At eight, starting at 8.15, I will uh, display the rules and all that stuff beforehand. But you, everyone who's on at 8.15 has a chance to compete. We will be cutting it down drastically from there for the final rounds, but... Have my good buddy Keith here, Kiefer, on the on, on the thing. He's a moderator here, helping me out uh, to to catch everybody, uh, to make sure we get everyone correct, and to make sure that it is all fair. Last time, I have to say, very proud of everybody. There was no no chicanery. Everybody followed the rules, and it was great, and I very much appreciated it. And I just realized I don't have my notebook near me, so. I'm going to be writing on the back of one of the pages of the rules, so I will be uh, having to reprint those again. Thank you, Zach Stuff, very much. He's always, he always contributes first and reminds me to say, yes, the Super Chat is on. So if anybody wants to kick in a few shekels, I very much appreciate that. So, uh, oh, Shaker's sitting here with him. Keith and Shaker, so you can't play. Yeah, he, yeah Keith has the answers. <laughs> no, you can't, because uh, I have to give him the answers to make sure that everything is right and just and all those things. Still looking around for one of my notebooks on the, the horrible mess that is my desk. And I'm not finding one, so I'm just going to write down the back of one of the pages of the rules. Uh, yeah, so after that, that starts at 8.15. It, last time it took about 20 minutes. I expect it to take just a bit longer this time, 25 minutes or so. And then uh, then we'll be on to the usual usual chicanery and ass hattery, And uh, it'll be a good time. I do definitely have some new knives to show you guys and stuff. Some that have already been on the channel. Some that are coming up. Talk about what's coming up. All the uh, all the usual, usual things. So, I do have to open my beer first, though, because I've been wanting to for a while. It's been sitting on my desk for like 15 minutes. Use the, yes, Tom Foolery as well. Uh, the Casey Lynch uh, Pry Bar. Can't remember what it's called, but uh, I really do like it a lot. I'm just, nothing exciting today. Just Stella. That's kind of, kind of my fallback. And I had my son buy me beer, and he knows I like Stella, and he didn't wasn't sure about anything else, so he got it. Man, it's nice having a, a son that's 21 years old that lives in your house, because you can have him buy you beer, which is uh, it's really cool. I can get beer with a text message now instead of, uh, he works at a grocery store, so. And my wife Lori's on. So uh, say hi, everybody say hi to Lori, that's LHB Art on there. We're working on some stuff for you guys. Uh, I, there is a video coming up any day now. Wifey Dicey. <laughs> I think you're the first person to say that. Probably not, but it doesn't feel like you should be, but I haven't heard that before. Um, yeah, um, uh, we're working on some stuff. So uh, we, we've, been, we've been plotting and planning this evening on things to, to get to you guys. Some cool merch and stuff like that. Uh, she's a genius when it comes to that stuff. So uh, we're plotting and planning. And I was hoping it would be on tonight, but Google has not approved me yet for it, which is annoying. But yes, we are going to have a membership program, sort of uh, a la what M MC, what Metal Complex does um, to allow you guys to get custom emojis and little things next to your name and all that stuff. And part of that is to finance uh to do uh the merch stuff so that's kind of part of the reason why I'm, I'm finally turning that button on i was kind of uh reluctant to do so but i am now so we're gonna do that so that i can get some uh, merch stuff going because you guys have wanted hats and t-shirts i have an amazing graphics designer that helps me out i have my wife that helps me out i need to start using that and make some cool stuff for you guys so uh that will be uh coming out yes Lori's been bugging me about doing merch for a very long time. So, yes, it is the quiz show tonight. These are the prizes. That's why this stuff is out. I normally have a bunch of really cool knives lined up. I have one cool knife on here in a very cool case, but I normally have a bunch of cool knives lined up. Uh, but, yeah, so the, the winner will get this uh, Blade Runner Systems BRS Nomad in a vault case. And then the second prize will get this thing, uh, which I bought at my local smoke shop, and uh, it's horrid. It's truly horrid, and 
I hope you will cherish it for all of its horridness. It is an MTech Galactic, is what we're calling it. Um, lots of paint, and it's just paint. It's not powder coat. That's paint, I'm sure. And uh, yeah, and you have to have it open to use the bottle opener. I should have used it to open my bottle tonight, but I don't want to hurt myself, so I didn't do that. Because you have to have a, like an open blade to open a bottle. That doesn't that doesn't seem like a good idea. I'm not I'm not an ergonomic you know OSHA expert, but I don't know if that seems like a bad idea. It does have an opening hole? I don't. No, you can't thumb flick it. Forget that. But uh, yeah, it's here. That'll be the booby prize. Uh, tackle fish cent or tackle central fishing. I never get that right. This is what's in your pocket tonight. Uh, today I was carrying uh, the Spartan Harsey folder. I just really like this. It's just very nice. And I have an excuse to because I have a battle to the death coming up involving this and the XM24 and the XM18. So yeah, never go full gas station. Exactly. Uh, and yes, you're right, Andrew Arnold. The Beastie Boys will not be making a song about that version of the Galactic. Uh, I clicked this. I thought it was Nick Shabazz, Terrible Knives Live. No, it's just there's just one terrible knife and I'm giving it away. I don't want to get on his shtick. I would love to just do an hour-long episode just of awful gas station knives, but that's, that's Shabazz's shtick. That's a gimmick infringement. I would never, ever do that to... Uh, and, and then OCD for EDC does it too. I would never go in on their... Uh, they're awful things. Yes, you do get some cool stuff Cool stuff at a gas station. Uh, yeah, Lori and I were on our way back from a sad occasion, and she was upset, and I went into a gas station in Arkport, New York, of all places, in the middle of nowhere, and um, they had really cool stuffed Baby Yodas there for 20 bucks, so I grabbed her one. Uh, where are BRS knives made? This one's made in China. Uh, some of theirs are U.S., though. Yeah, she was sad, so I bought her a baby Yoda, and it's it is adorable. The Mandalorian is the coolest thing Star Wars has ever done, and but I am man enough to admit that little baby Yoda is just so cute. It's just so cute. I I I, I am I am not impervious to baby Yoda's cuteness. So uh, yeah, and I try to take good care of her. Yes, so um. Here in Texas, we can get beaver nuggets. What's a beaver nugget, Andrew Arnold? I, I, I'm hesitant to ask, but I think the question needs to be posed. What the hell is a beaver nugget? I'm guessing it's something's balls. The bottle opener looks like a mutant shark. Something. I don't know what it is. This thing has a lot going on. Uh, nothing going on that makes me want to put it in my pocket, but... Hopefully Baby Yoda actually gets a name next season. Connor Mitchell says, yeah, I hope so. Something. Eric Ocasio says Baby Groot or Baby Yoda. I mean, I like Baby Groot, but I'm a Star Wars guy, so got to go Baby Yoda. And yes, August West. The Mandalorian is the best thing that Star has ever come out of Star Wars. Episode 6, or Chapter 6, whatever they call it, of The Mandalorian is uh, probably the best 37 minutes of Star Wars that ever has existed. It's just so good. I've watched it five or six times. I believe it's chapter six. Hope I'm getting that right. It's the one where all the Mandalorians come out. Spoiler. But yeah, wow. That's good. Um, Peter Frank says Empire Return. Empire for sure. You probably shouldn't Google Beaver Nuggets Radio. <laughs> says, yeah, probably not. Yes, they are doing a season two. It's actually already filmed. It's in production, I guess. So it's what I've, what I've read. It's supposed to come out in October. They said it's not going to be delayed. It is coming out in October. I'd say Clone Wars is still better, not by much, though. I w Connor, I will agree that the last three episodes of Clone Wars, the last three ever, the last three in this final season, were amazing. Uh, but overall, I, the whole body of work so far, I gotta go manned up. Andrew Arnold says, actually, at Corn Pop Cereal, it's the mascot snack at Bucky's. Oh, okay. That's not nearly as awful as I thought it was going to be. Um, sign painter Chris says, uh, Boba Fett making an appearance. God, I hope not. I, I mean, I, 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 I don't know. I just, I, that's my worry for season two is they're going to cram in too much other stuff. Just it's fine as it is. I like that. We don't know these characters and we're learning the characters. I don't need a million other characters crammed in. 
but I know they're going to. I am excited about the prospect of seeing a live action Thrawn, though, because Thrawn is my boy. But um, I really hope they don't cram in too much. And, you know, live action, uh, live action Ahsoka, absolutely. I, I'm all on board for live action Ahsoka. Um, that's going to be a fantastic, and Rosario Dawson's going to kill it. Uh, I'm totally on board for that. But some of the other ones added on, I'm like, eh, I don't know. Um, and then I guess they're going to do an Ahsoka live show and that's where you may see a live action Thrawn so I'm excited about that but we have four minutes till the quiz show starts and then I will explain the rules and uh, Keith is going to help me out there are stiff penalties if you disobey the rules and we are strict about them we didn't have to use them once last time so Dirk Gravy says how much for the M tech? Well, you can enter to win. You just have to answer six questions. Answer these six questions and these six questions. The I don't know. If that was a bad money Python reference, but uh, noise Tony R. We say, oh, your actual birthday is May the fourth. Oh, well, May the fourth be with you. I mean, how's the BRS Tanto? It's a pretty cool knife. Uh, I did record a review on it yet. I've not used it yet, but uh, yeah, it's you can you can win it tonight. No cheating except for Shaker MT. Shaker MT is banned from this contest because you said he's sitting next to you. So, uh, yeah. The life of Brian. Yeah, I used to, that used to be my thing on Twitter for a long time was uh, he's not the Messiah. He's a very naughty boy. Um, a life of Brian reference. They spell it incorrectly in that movie, but uh, whatever. Um, Catharsis DC. Who's it made by? It's uh, Blade Runner Systems, if you're talking about that knife. I don't know exactly who the manufacturer is. I know it's made over in China, but I don't know what the uh, OEM is. I have a guess. What's the brew? Nothing fancy today, Mikey. Just a Stella Artois. You can't have the Constellation Prize because you're sitting next to Keith. All, all it will cost you is 10 of your American dollars and just go to some terrible gas station near you. And you can get it. Probably the gas is fake too, though, so I wouldn't uh, wouldn't get there. No Bud Light, no. Close. It's as close to Bud Light as I get. Just Stella Artois. I like a good Stella every now and then. It's kind of the mood for it tonight. Uh, da. Hopefully the bo the baby won't wake up during this. Yeah, well, you know, put put like a towel under your door, Christina, so it's quiet. You know, the baby'd be fine. It'll be fine for 25 minutes. It'll be all right. Still, uh, what's the MSR, MSRP on the BRS? It's uh, 135, I do believe. Most likely a smoke shop in the south with a Middle Eastern flair, BDC Swain says. Yeah, that's kind of where I got this, except there's no Middle Eastern flair. There, it's an Italian flair, but uh, yeah, that's where I got mine. Uh, Nakai names his Porsche RWB after the Stella. Oh, Porsche RWBs are very, very cool. Looks like it's got amazing ergos. This actually is pretty good. But let's uh, let's start getting ready for this. I got to start arranging all of my accoutrement uh, that I'm going to use. So I do have all of my rules printed. I have all of my questions here on cards. Verify they are in the correct order. Yes, they are. It will be amazing if I get through this without screwing something up. You guys know me, so. Uh, LHBR and my wife oh, have fun. May the smartest person win. It's the smartest and the fastest person. It's, you have to be a little bit of both. You have to be smart and quick with the typing. <laughs> Lori says she's not going to help anybody. I will. My wife is a brilliant woman and very smart about a lot of things, but I can almost guarantee. She does not know the answer to any of these questions. Yes, LHBR, Lori, my wife, is a saint, Lon Solo. Lon Solo, oh my God, that's an awesome name. That is a superb YouTube name. Wow, that's good. That's very, very good. I have, I'm just, I'm just going to give you a little clap. Lon Solo is a fantastic name. All right. We're at 15, so here we go with the rules. I'm going to put the prizes aside for a moment. These are the prizes you are competing for. I guess I should do the intro music, right? It's the quiz show. If anybody knows why I do it that way, I would, I would be, you're not going to get anything, but I'd be pleased. Um, 
Yes, you're going to get this BRS Systems Nomad. This is from Blade Runner Systems. This is about 135 bucks. Uh, S35 VN, I do believe. Really cool knife. Runs on bearings. It's awesome. It's just a kind of a little little bit of a mini tank. I love it a lot. The action is really, really cool. Um, yes, it is a Big Show reference. Um, and then you will also win this vault case, which these things are great. I have two of them. I use them for some of my more expensive knives. And because uh, they they have a bit of protection to them. This is the plain version. There is also a faux carbon. I use the faux carbon, but uh, cause I'm a sucker for carbon, uh, even if it's fake. But yeah, lots of really cool customizable slots to put your stuff. I put pens and stuff up here on the top part. Put little parts and stuff down in there. Uh, they're just they're just awesome. I have two of them. And uh, this is about 35 bucks, I do believe. Uh, that is going in with the grand prize. And then the second, or the uh, the consolation prize, as is the tradition of 1980s game shows everywhere, you have to have a terrible consolation prize. You know, everybody win like a 25 grand and a full expenses paid trip to Bermuda. And the consolation prize was like the home game or like a month's supply of Rice Krispies. Uh, yeah, this this is your month's supply of Rice Krispies. This is just an M-Tech. I don't know what. It's horrid. It is technically a multi-tool, I guess. It has a pry bar, maybe Phillips head on the back of it. It has a bottle opener that you can only use when the knife is open, which is probably not a good idea, but it's there. So here we go. What are the rules for this thing? I have them all printed out here and everything. So, round one. All commenters are eligible. If you are on here, you can answer round one. You can answer the question. Feel free. Just put it in there. The first ten move on to round two. Once we get to round two, only those ten people are eligible. And if you answer and you're not eligible... Penalties shall ensue, which shall be explained in just a moment. So round two, only the 10 from the previous round are eligible. The first five of those move on to the next round. Round three, the five from the previous round are the only ones eligible to answer, and the first four move on. And then you can kind of see a pattern developing for the next rounds we have. Only four from the previous round are eligible first three and then round four you only get three and then it's just those two and then the final round only two first answers win that's how it goes so you don't only have to know the answer you have to be quick with it so here are the rules and penalties if you comment with an answer correct or not because it's really hard for keith and i to keep up on here of everybody's answers so if you do any if you if you comment anything or not like if i don't care if it's just a joke answer don't do that we'll have time for for our usual silliness and stupidity in a moment i promise you you are banned from the channel for a week because it's just i can't have that happen last time we didn't have to ban anybody everything worked out fine but we absolutely will do that you'll be banned from commenting and all that stuff for a week so do not screw with the contest do not do not mess with the purity of the contest because these are that is like 160 bucks worth of stuff so don't do that and then also first round is one answer only multiple guesses are disqualified subsequent rounds are allowed multiple tries first first correct answer wins because once you start whittling it down and and i did make the questions harder this time so it's fine uh Winners have 40 hours to provide an address. Email sliceyd 75 at gmail.com. It is linked down below. Has to be U.S. only for this one because of the knife that's in there because uh, I don't want to get confiscated by somebody's whatever. Uh, when I have stuff that is uh, legal everywhere, then it will be anybody can enter. But All right, any questions on the rules? I'm going to give you like a minute and a half to ask any more questions you have you don't understand. Soup Nazi rules. Yes, Lon Solo, you were right. No knife for you! Uh, so, minute and a half. Coming back for another win. Yeah. 
Kronika, Kronika, whatever it was. Yeah, you did really good last time. And yeah, you can keep you can keep winning. People can just keep winning. Maybe it'll be a streak. That'll be you can you can defend a streak. That'll be fun. All right. So the rules, the rules are in. The most important thing is if we don't say that you're eligible to answer that question, don't do it. It's 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 pretty easy. So we will make sure to say I have a pen here. I've got some paper to write the the names down. So in between each round, give Keith and I a couple minutes to, to figure stuff out. So the first question, are you ready for the quiz show? All right. I tried to make the first question a little bit harder than usual. A little bit harder than the last one, because I want to make people think for just a second so that Keith and I have time to get the names. Here's the first question. As soon as you see it on the screen, you can start answering. Name the knife brand credited with inventing the pocket clip. Do not comment on my poor, my poor handwriting. And all right, you can stop. We got 10 now. We got 10 now. You can stop. Please stop now. Please stop now. Please stop now so we can go back and get these. 10 may have been a bad idea. So I'm gonna write down mine. I've got Connor Mitchell, Andrew Arnold, and Keith and I will compare notes here. Red Dog, oh, coming back strong. Red Dog was also made it very far in the last one. If it didn't win, I don't remember. Ron G. Tim Simcoe. Albert Lerner. Oh, why did I do that? Lerner. Tyler Thomas. Ocon Seven. Is that one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight? Two more after that. Josh Lopez. And Sean T. That's who I have. So I'm just going to wait for verification from my lovely assistant, who I'm totally making wear a Vera White dress, or Vera White? Vanna White dress during this, so. Um, we are, that, that's my 10. So I'm going to put that up here. Is that your 10, Keith? Please, please confirm and do not show your Vanna White dress. I answer before Sean T. Let me look. And not on my screen you didn't. I have to go by what's on my screen. So the lag monster does bite sometimes, but... Nope, I do not have you before Sean T., me with knives sorry and does uh, i missed if keith said yep that's what he got too so we we are we are we are in con we are uh, together on this so yes i'm sorry sometimes lag we see stuff and other people don't and it, it, it looks different on your screen but i think this is the correct list so we have to go by what we see because if you answer, it it gives you the answer on your screen first, but it doesn't mean that we got it first. Does that make sense? Because otherwise you could just go by, everybody could just say that. So, question number two is only for, he is in a full sequence, full sequence dressed Keith is, and today I told him to wear the thong, because last time there was an exposed panty line and it was a thing, and I told him that that's just not classy. So yeah, and Super Chat is open down below. So if, if somebody wants to kick in a few shekels, it's not going to help you win, but you can do that. So it's only available for these people. And from now on, I'm just going to cross people off this list as they go through. So are all 10 of you ready for question number two? Are you ready for question number two? Here we go. This is a pretty easy one. So this is one that's going to have to be like, oh, you're going to be really quick on the button on this one. 
All right. What does the word sabenza mean in English? And again, you're not allowed to criticize my penmanship. We got one. All right. Okay, we're going to do... Ooh, I'm going to have to be really careful on one of these. Uh, I'm very sorry. I'm going to be a stickler, Connor. That's, that's not right. It's, it's work, not worker. I'm sorry to be a stickler on the rules, but I'm going to have to be on this one. So we have Josh, we have uh, Tyler Thomas. Yeah, Andrew Arnold was first. Tyler Thomas, Josh Lopez, Red Dog, still sticking in it. And everybody stop, uh, everybody stop for just one second so I can get get all these so Tyler Thomas Josh Lopez Red Dog Ocon you're in and Albert Lerner again I'm sorry it's it's work not worker and that's five to me so make sure I have these all right is that is that what you have, Keith? And did I count to five correctly? The visual was bad enough with the dress, and I added the thong. Yep. Are you too late? Yes, I'm sorry. You are. We've already started the, started the show. It's okay. So we have for round three. Ding ding. I'm also wearing a bikini and parading around uh, my office like uh, like a ring girl. So if that if you want a bad images, now you got that one too. Uh, we have Andrew Arnold, Red Dog, Tim Simcoe, Ocon Seven, and Josh Lopez. So that is the five that are eligible to enter. No one else is allowed to enter. And again, this will be over shortly, and we will go on to uh, a, our normal ass hattery after this. I have a whole bunch of really cool knives lined up off to the side here to show you guys. So. Uh, if you don't want to watch the rest of this, day, go do something else for 10 minutes or so. Go, uh, you know, yell at your dog, and you'll be back, and you'll be fine. They have to hydrate a bit. So here we go. Question number three. And in this round, we reduce down to just four. Now we're in single elimination. So now it's pretty easy to figure out from here on out. <laughs> Big Red gave me five dollars for Brian in the bikini. I could probably make that happen. I'm a whore. I, I I'm not. I I have. I, I'll, I'll. Yeah, fine. Pay me enough money. I'll I'll do a bikini pick. It'll be fun. I'll put it on the cover of a comedy album or something. Um, I've done much more embarrassing things on live television. All right. Number three. Round three. This will reduce only one person. The first four are eligible from here. What is the name of Spider Co.'s proprietary new steel. The steel that only they are allowed to use. What is the name of that? All right, we have four. Ocon, you're out. I'm sorry. It gets so much easier as this goes on. I apologize, Ocon. You just missed it, man. So, we have a lost pen. There we go. So, Ocon is out now. Ocon. Okan. I keep saying Okan, and you've never really said exactly how to pronounce it, but Okan. You say Okan on your thing, so I guess I so. Uh, Tim Simcoe says, I'm out. Not according to my screen, you're not out. It was Okan. He gave the wrong answer. Oh, you're right! You are right! Thank you for being a cool guy. You are absolutely right. You did give the wrong answer. I saw a spy. So Okan is still in. Okan, you are in. There we go. You are definitely in. You are right. You are right. Good man. Good man. I'll send you a sticker or something. Still send me your address because that's it's cool when people catch up on my stuff. And wow, I almost I think I showed the I showed part of the part of the question for the other one. So all right. Andrew Arnold was wrong. Where is that? Spidey twenty seven. I'm gonna allow. I'm gonna allow Spidey twenty seven. I'm gonna allow that, but I'm not gonna allow Spy twenty five. 
So I'm, I'm going to allow that one. I'm going to allow that one. So it's judges' rules. I'm going to allow it. So question four. This is another steel-related question. They are getting a bit more difficult. A little bit more difficult. What steel does a Hinderer Vintage Series use? What steel does a Hinderer Vintage Series use? And we have our three. So we're down to three now. We had Andrew Arnold is out. That was the last one. All right. These are fantastic questions. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. I, I actually put, like, thought into them this time. So, uh, yeah, it was a... Uh, I had to look some of them up myself. I didn't know. All right. So we have Red Dog, Oaken, and Josh Lopez. I need to get some kind of electronic display for this, don't you think? I'm sure that would be cheap and easy. Uh, I should probably do that, though. That would be a lot of fun. So, next one is... Now, this is going to be one that's just quick on the fingers. Or, it, it, maybe it's misleading. Don't want to confuse you, but maybe it's misleading. We will see, because I know I had it wrong for a long time. Excuse me, for a long time. What does SOG stand for? As in the name of the company SOG that makes knives. What, what does SOG stand for? Oh, it's taken a minute. I have not seen a correct answer yet. Ooh, this one's taken some people a minute. Some This has taken some people a minute. Ooh, I like this one. Yep, some people are having to Google, which is fine. I, I don't mind at all if you do that, but you got to get it right. Wow, this stumped people a lot more than I thought. I should have made this the final question. Not a single correct answer on my screen so far. Not. Don't answer if you are not part of it. Nope. Nobody's gotten it yet. I mean, they have a website, guys. You can just you can look it up. It's like right there at the top of the website. It's right at the top of the website. Just go to the website and look it. Look it up. Mr. Blower, you are not part of it. Stop answering. And yes, that, that tone was intentional. Um, all right, we got one, two... Everyone eligible can keep guessing, but if you're not eligible, just stop. You, you know if you're eligible or not, because I told you. All right, we got, we got our three. So hold on, stop answering for one second. Make sure I got this right, because wow, that, that, that took a hot minute. Um, we have, first one I saw was Ocon, and... And uh, Josh Lopez got in. I believe it was Red Dog was the other one. Who did you have? I know I saw three. Who did you have, Keith? So I had Red Dog, Josh Lopez. Josh Lopez. That's what I that's what it says on the top of their site. Study, you, no, you didn't get it wrong, dude. That's exactly what it says on the top of their website. Um, in Ocon, yes. So Ocon, Josh Lopez, and what was the other? I have those two. I know I saw three. Oh, somebody screwed me up. 
Somebody screw me up. I'm going to flip over this table. No, I won't because it's mine. Red Dog. That was the other one. That's the one that I got. Observations, not operation. Oh, I didn't see that you said operation. I read observations. Is it studies or studies? I'm not going to be that particular. No one else was going to get it. So I think we're going to go with Lopez, Ocon, and Red Dog. I think that question was hard enough that no one else is going to get it. Do you agree with that, Keith? I think we could sit here for a while. And, man, I thought everybody would get that pretty quick. It's just, I, I know I was wrong about it for a long time, but once I knew, I knew. So, yeah, we have Red Dog, Ocon 7, and Josh Lopez is the final one. Yes, only three go on in this round. So we keep knocking them down one per round. Or is it two? Did I get off? I'm sorry, it's two. I, I got way off on here. I got one ahead of myself. It's just down to two, so yep. I screwed up myself, so thank you, Micah, and everyone else who corrected me. It's just two. So who are the first two, Keith? I'm an idiot tonight. Too many Bud Lights. No, I've only had like one quarter of a Stella. It's just I'm trying to get this thing gone. Nobody's bought sock until recently. That's a good point. That's, it is a harder question than I thought. So who are the first two? Who are the first two with the correct O'Connor oh, Red Dog? So Josh Lopez is out. Who He said he was out. He was right. I was wrong. I was trying to throw him a bone, and I should not have. All right. So we're just down to Ocon 7 and Red Dog. Who gets, who gets a really cool knife and a really cool case? And who winds up with this puppy? This is what you guys are all competing against. Who gets stuck with this? And who gets... A really cool knife and a really cool case. All right, this is the final question. Final, final, final question. And I'm quite proud of this one. So I hope it takes everybody half a second anyway. Red Dog, Ocon, you were the only two that are allowed to answer. What brand of knives does John Wick primarily use? What brands of knives does John Wick primarily use? The, the famous... Start, no, thanks. Don't stop answering. If you're not part of it, don't freaking answer. I told you who's eligible to answer, and you did anyway. And, yep. So, the first one was Ocon. Ocon got it. He got it. Ocon 7. The winner is... Ocon 7 for the win, which is kind of cool because I have something else I got to ship you. I wanted to ship you anyway, and it's been taking me a hot minute. So now you're going to get all that stuff inside a case, inside a vault case. So saves me shipping. Everything worked out very, very well So <laughs> for all parties involved. So congratulations, Oaken. I have your address, but send it to me again just to make sure that I have it. And also... Second place, very much to Red Dog. Please send me an address and you'll get... Did you win the Terrible Knife last time? I think I think you're racking up awful knives on behest of me. So uh, congratulations there. You did. I thought you did. So now you get... You're, gonna, <laughs> you're just going to have a collection of gas station knives. Always, always the bridesmaid, never the bride, with a closet full of terrible, awful knives. Congrats, Ogan. Can't wait to see on the little couch. Our little couch is so good. So uh, now let's bring out some good knives. But thank you guys so much for participating and mostly being okay. A couple of you jumped in and tried to answer when you're not eligible. but uh, Not as many as I expected. But thank you very, very much. I do appreciate it. These things are fun. I think I'm going to... And I, Wow, I nailed it. I said 25 minutes, and it's exactly how long it took. So they don't take up the whole show. But now let's bring out some cool stuff and let the uh, S-hattery begin. 
as I say, what I want to bring out first. Well, of course, good old Walt. He's got to come out. If you guys didn't watch that video of mine about the XM24 vintage, uh, please do. It's not. Uh, it does have a full review later, but a lot of cool stories about my grandpa. I was pretty proud of it. So um, this is, I keep bringing out the American Blade Works Model 1 V4, but I keep bringing it out because he keeps changing stuff and keeps sending it to me. So, uh, yeah, now it has a different flipper tab. So I did a blade swap on it. He sent me a new blade and a new pocket clip, and it makes it even better than it was before, and I liked it before anyway. So uh, I got to keep bringing that out. We'll bring out the Thule. You guys asked a lot of questions about that before, and I still have not done the full review on it. And this is uh, the new Kaiser G. It was called the Genie, and now it's just the G which I don't know what that means, but that's what it says on the blade and it's what it says on the box. So I don't know if it's an abbreviation. I need to get some clarification of that, but whatever it is, it's a really cool little front flipper. Really, really enjoying it. And what else do we want to bring out? Well, since they help sponsor the show, we'll bring out the Blade Runner Systems. I don't remember which this one is, but I really like it. I, I don't know why it is. I have a mental block. I don't remember their names, but uh, this one is really cool. Somebody knows what it is. Put it on there. Um, hey, OCD, how's it going, man? Um, OCD, by the way, will be live uh, at 9 o'clock. I will probably still be going by then because we did a live show. Oh, and what else do I want to bring out here? I have a few. Oh, and we'll bring out the Quiet Carry Waypoint because I have another way or another Quiet Carry coming, and I want to talk about that a little bit. So, Overwatch, there you go, thank you. I really like it, whatever the heck its name is. It's uh, it's pretty darn cool. They sent me the, the stuff for the for the live show tonight, and they also threw in a couple of other of their higher end ones, and uh, this is this is pretty great. Not only does it look cool, I actually really like carrying it. It's just a big, beefy little son bitch, and it's just uh, a lot of fun. Uh, have you ever handled the Best Tech Shinkansen front flipper? Yeah, I liked it. Okay, not enough to buy one, but I did like it quite a bit. Uh, Okan7 says, I'm about to snag the Chase Friday if the LC200 isn't gone. I have, yes, I have one reserved. So, yes, I'm definitely getting the Chase. That's the one I want to talk about. I'm getting the LC200 Chase in black. They're not, I think they're... I think they're dropping on Friday. So you should be good, Oaken. If you want a black one, I, I could buy an orange or a pink one right now, but pink is, you know, pink, and I have a religious hatred of orange knives. Jamal says, be sure to check IG when this is over. I'll have, I'll have a post with a question for you. Ooh, a question? Um, it, uh, Oh, I, ooh, that all black is nice. I don't think it's the all black. I don't think the LC200N is coated. It would be kind of silly to coat LC200N, so I doubt it is. I think it's just black handles. And if it is, then I will buy an orange one, and I will dye the scales black because I just I don't want to coat it. I think coating on LC200N would just be silly town. Hey, homie. I've never gotten to say that. Homie G says, what's up from Cali? Hey, homie, what up in Cali? Um... Any inside info on the Protect Malibu Tanto drop? Uh, Chris asked. They they've have been dropping. It's just they're just making them as fast as they can get them. I don't think it's like a set like drop, you know, like we're used to. I know they're just going out to dealers. I was going to do the orange and diet most likely. Yeah. Yeah, the quiet carries are pretty cool with all the LC two hundred N stuff. It's just I'm LC two hundred N is becoming one of my favorite steals. Like not only not only is it like just, you know, not only is it completely corrosion resistant, it's just really good steel too. Like the edge retention is more than enough to keep me happy and it's super easy to sharpen. I'm just a big fan of LC200N now. I, it might be my favorite steel now. I don't know if anybody else has anything in LC200, but does anybody else feel that way as well? It's just a great steel. Yeah, it's a trickle more than a drop, yeah. If you had to choose Malibu or Mordax, Malibu, because it fits, it just fits my lifestyle a bit better. But they're, everybody asks me, Malibu, Mordax, Malibu, Mordax, they're completely different knives. The only thing that's similar about them is they're made by ProTech and they're button lock manuals. Uh, they're totally different. 
Jeremy Russell says, I'll stick with S90V as my favorite. That's because you're better at sharpening than me then, Jeremy, because I get really annoyed <laughs> at sharpening stuff. Uh, do you still have your malice? Yes, I do. LC200N is this month's steel choice for the TSA game. Oh, is it? Oh, I should have. Do I have time to enter? I mean, the only one I have is this. I'd probably be a knucklehead and just try to sneak in the factory edge. <laughs> Send in the factory one. S90V makes me money, so of course I love it. Oh, I don't, I don't know anything about that. You've never explained why that is. Uh, the Protec Malibu is more similar to the Protec Cambria. Yes, you're right, Oaken. That's a, it's kind of the replacement for the uh, for the Cambria. Randy F says, "I hope they make the Malibu with a drop point." Well, I've gotten the impression from them that there are going to be many, 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 many Malibu variants. They're they're aware they have a hit on their hands, and they are going to take advantage of that. So I would not dis. I don't think I don't like. No one's told me that they're coming out with a drop point, but I wouldn't. I wouldn't. Uh, I wouldn't bet against it. I think they're going to be doing a whole lot of stuff with that. Uh, I managed to snag a reverse Tanto from SCKW that ordered 35, but only got five in due to demand. Jonathan Wallace says, yeah, that I've, I've heard a few dealers that are saying that, like, but they'll, they'll be in. They'll be in over the next couple of weeks. Geomar. Sorry, I've been watching. I can't make any more knife buys. Son started kindergarten. Well, daddy gets put in the back burner. Yep, that happens. By the way, the super chat is open. If anyone wants to kick in a few shekels, we always appreciate that. What is the second knife from the left? Looks beefy. It is the BRS Overwatch. Remember again now. Pretty cool little knife. It is very beefy. It's not particularly long, but uh, it's a big old beefy thing. And I do like it a whole lot. I got two BRSs. They sent me this and another one that's name escapes me, but I know this is one that's been out for a while that everybody's talking about, which is also really super cool. Uh, but I don't know. I think I think I like this better. And it's not just because it's bronze and I like bronze, but uh, I don't know. I just like it. It just looks evil. This is much slimmer, easy to carry, but uh, looks very futuristic. Yes, the Apache. Uh, it looks very futuristic pirate. Yes, it does. That That's a very good description, Oaken. It definitely is that. Uh, yeah, future pirate. Future small pirate. I think pirates probably carry bigger blades than that. But um, uh, yeah, I just I just love the way it fills my hand. And it's just... And I talked to one of the owners of BRS, and he was just saying, yeah, I feel like if people more people knew about this, they'd buy it. And I kind of agree. It's not horribly overpriced, and it's just... It's just really well built, and it just feels like a tank. It comes in other colors, too, but it's just, uh, I like that black and orange, the uh, Apache. Futuristic Pirate's Toothpick. Yeah, that could be. You have to have really big gaps in your teeth, though, but and it is right hand, left hand. I love the pocket clip on it. This thing has, has been in my pocket a lot since I got it. It's just, uh, it's not light at all for the size that it is. It's a bit of a tank. There's zero milling going on inside here for weight relief or anything, but uh, it's action is really good, and it's just it's just pretty darn cool. Scott Simmons says, been using my Caribbean Sheep's Foot LC200 for over a year at my day gig building seawalls. Wow. Uh, it's been a hell of a cutter and pretty eater sharp and zero corrosion. Yeah, that, that's, a, that's a good knife for somebody who builds seawalls. You work in the sea. I don't know why I want to do that in a voice. There's a baby spider trying to drop down from my phone. That's terrifying. But, yeah, go watch the XM24 video, even if you're not into really expensive knives. I know this is a very expensive knife. They're 635 bucks, but I was very proud of that video and uh, made my whole family watch it. They were all very proud of it. So, even some people that actually knew the man it's about. So, um Christopher Wilhelm says the Overwatch could be a Kershaw. Now, Kershaw has never built anything as beefy as this. Could be a ZT. And no way in no way in God's green earth that thing would be a Kershaw. Uh, love my Emerson CQ C15. I'm not familiar with exactly that one is. 
Uh, looks at pivot. I don't know. Uh, yeah, people do stylize things on pivots. I liked your last premiere in Good Stories, Bony Blade. says, yeah, that's the one about the XM24. So, yeah, it's a, just a little tribute to my, my cool old grandpa. I would say God rest his soul, but he'd probably roll his eyes. Scroll up here a little bit and see some questions that I surely missed. Mika says, got a Civivi Elementum recently and was inspired to die today after seeing some of your died videos. I hope it came out all right. Yeah, dying is is uh, pretty easy. That's D-Y, dying, not dying. Randy F says, uh, getting in hinders is kind of like getting to watch as you, you just can't do it. Yeah, definitely. They absolutely breed. Sergeant Kong says, so Brian, any idea where this hinder or fanboyism came from? I No, I don't. I hated them when I first got into knives. And then I got an 0562 and I liked that. And then it just it just went from there. And I'm not ashamed. I'll admit I'm a hinder or fanboy. I love them. They're just great knives. And once you have one, they don't seem as expensive, if that makes any sense. And, uh, yeah, I had... I got up to five, said I'd never do more than five, and this was intended to be a catch and release. It honestly was. And then um didn't work out that way. So now I have six. Um are these knives for sale? If they were, I'd tell you. Uh counter wrench says they don't seem expensive because the money's already gone. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. They do breed, absolutely for sure, but but yeah, how awesome! I just wanted I just wanted to touch back on this because I didn't talk about enough. How awesome is American Blade Works? Uh, Mike Martin over there, Michael Martin. Uh, just uh, yeah, he sent me another blade to swap out because he changed the flipper tab. Now part of that is because I do have a YouTube channel with eighteen ish thousand followers, and and he knows this is a contender for knife of the year, and he wanted to show me what the new ones look like. But it's still just awesome, and different pocket clip too. Fits in my five eleven tactical jeans now. It did not before, so. That's cool. But I am going to put it away and pull out something else. Oh, pull out the Wii Snacks Mini Buster. And this this is going to get reviewed in the next couple of days. So we'll put that down. And bring out... And we'll bring out this. You guys ask about this all the time. The Wii Knives Banter. Uh, Randy F says, Lori's gone. It's okay to be honest. No, I don't, I don't lie to her at all about what I spent on knives because she knows that it's part of the channel and she believes in this as a project going forward and she doesn't give me any crap at all about knives. I, I told her exactly what I paid for this. Uh, I sold another knife and I bought it with that, uh, with that money. I sold an XM18 and I bought this for less than I sold the XM18 for. So, and then I sold the scale that came with it. So I, I actually don't have that much money in this knife at all for a hinderer. So that's another part of the reason why it's just going to be sticking around for a bit. Elkin says, great knife, great improvements made in America. Yes, absolutely, sure. So ha that's how the V4 comes out? Yes, I'll bring it back out here really quick. Yeah, it's got just... The only, the only change was they just the flipper tabs a bit more minimal. And... The uh, the pocket clip has a bit more ramp and stuff to make it easier to go in. You can see it's kind of arced a little bit. So if you have thicker pants, you have a bit more room. That's that's the only two changes they made on the V4. But and I and I do believe all the ones he shipped and sold have this little smaller flipper tab. So instead of having a big long flipper tab, he went with a shorter one and some jimping, which I think is a very good change. How much are those V4s with the CF? Two thirty five. I believe 235. Uh, Chris just Skulski says I need to figure out how to sell a knife. Um, I my best recommendation is, is uh, get a YouTube channel and then get thousands of followers. But no, I'm kidding, obviously. But uh, um, Reddit is the best place that I have an option if I'm not relying on my subs and my followers. Instagram are here. Reddit uh, Reddit knife swap is the best place to sell them. I would say. Oh, you mean you just can't let them go? Yeah, I, under I understand that as well. 
all the V4 be, be available. They are now as they come out. So he's a small manufacturer, so they're going to trickle a little bit. But um, bring out something budgety. Yeah, they're going to they're going to be out there now. So they are technically available. This is the Steel Wheel Sedge. This is tomorrow's review. And I really like it for a little budget knife. It's pretty cool. It is insolent and does not want to stand up pretty for the camera. But other than that, I really do like it. And if you are a follower of Nick Shabazz, I actually got this one from uh, Nick Shabazz's Discord page. Uh, and, and you guys. Somebody... I mentioned in a video I was curious about getting an XM24 because I have this, which I was carrying today, the Spartan Harsey folder, and I said I thought maybe it was more comparable to an XM24 than an XM18, and I should probably get an XM24, kind of jokingly, and then somebody sent me the, uh, the a link to this being available on Nick Shabazz's Discord page for a, honestly criminally low price and then somebody one of you guys commented before i even had a chance to comment and said i think slicey dicey wants wants one of those and he said if slicey dicey bought it i'd knock more money off so i i couldn't it was such a good deal and it came with a very expensive aftermarket scale that i was able to resell and get even more of my money back so yeah i i don't have much money in this at all and now it's got a name so it's got to be kept um that's just the way it is uh dark gravity says don't know how to join shabazz discord I, I i found it through his patreon i think maybe you have to be a patreon member and then i'll send you an invite to it but yeah good old wall ain't going anywhere for a while and all of my hinderers for hinderers are are kind of are kind of dainty which is a qualified statement but uh i like having this one big old freaking bruiser oh one tool steel wood it's just a big old tough thing and what's great about the vintage series is yeah you can just use it even though there are limited numbers and they're serial numbered and all that you can just use it nobody's gonna know they come beat up they come beat up like out of the box <laughs> so it's not like oh i don't want to i don't want to scratch it Who's going to know? Like, look at that blade finish. Who's going to know if I scratch it? Look at the, the tie side finish. Who's going to know if I scratch it? You know, in the wood, do you damage that? It's just going to look cooler. I'm going to put some oil on this, though, because it feels a bit dry, that walnut. But um, that's a Yeah, and they're parkerized. So they're, they ain't going anywhere. It'll be fine. Uh... Oh, hey, Stasa, I didn't see you on there. Yeah, this is this is Stasa's. It's going back to him. But I got another one. Somebody else sold me one because Stasa's a big meanie poopy head. Everyone call him a big meanie poopy head right now because it'll make me giggle because he wouldn't sell me this. But luckily I found another person so we can remain friends. But he still is a big meanie poopy head because he would not sell me this mini buster. Uh... Mad King Deuce. Yeah, if you if you don't want to hang around here, please go over to OCD and uh, OCD for EDC and check out his live show. I'll be over there when this is done. Oh, it's it's blocking it and everything. I have to I have to show it, it blocks Big Meanie Poopy Head. <laughs> it's so funny that YouTube blocks Big Meanie Poopy Head and doesn't allow you to say it. And yes, Mikey Rass, I do have to oil my wood. Uh, Mad King Deuce says, really liked your Walter video last night. He sounds like my grandfather from England. RAF Survivor. Wow, yeah. That's some hardcore stuff. Love the Vintage Series. I want a 3.5. Yeah, now I kind of do too, but I have one. I don't, I don't need, I don't need another XM18. I've got plenty of XM18s. Why is it not allowing people to say Big Meanie Poopy Head? That is so funny. Oh, now you can say it. Oh, you can't say poopy head in one word. You can say big, meanie, poopy, space, head. But, and badass, anno head, totally fine. But big, meanie, poopy head, if you put it in one word, it blocks. I will never, ever understand the Google rules. GMR Domingo says, Benchmade fan, sorry dudes. No apologies for that. I'm a huge Benchmade fan. I have a bunch of them. 
this is what was in my pocket yesterday, actually, was an Anthem, which is like the Benchmade. So I clearly like Benchmade a whole lot. Actually, we're just going to put it out here. I'll put the BRS away. No, you never have to apologize for being a Benchmade fan here. We are, you are welcome here, Geomar. Not as welcome as you are probably on the, uh, on the Zach stuff channel, but <laughs> you're still welcome here. Zach is like the Benchmade channel. You got army big knives, dude. I don't know what that is. I, I don't quite understand that. Did I get you into big knives? Yeah, I've been into big knives lately, if that's what you meant. Mikey Rass says, I want to bug out. I don't know what color to get. I am a big fan of, even though I don't usually like coated blades, Benchmate does a really good job on their coatings. I know Zach can attest to this as well. Um, I'm a, if I had one bug out, it would definitely be this one, the CF Elite. That's the one that I would get. I just, I really like this one. Can we see the grand? Love that thing. Oh, it's, is it within reach? I'll look in a second. I'm not positive it's within reach, in easy reach of me. Um, GMR says, any tips on aspiring knife fanatics thinking about joining you in the fray? If you mean uh, starting a YouTube channel, we have enough. No, I'm, I'm kidding. No, it's just to, just be yourself. Don't spend a lot of money on equipment, especially initially. Um, and... Just be yourself, and if you have a personality that people like, it's going to take off. And if you don't, it won't. And that's kind of about all I had to say about it. And I think Zach stuff and Destasa, they're on here too. I think they'd agree about that too. It's just you can't, you can't hide the fact of your personality. So people are either going to like your reviews, they're going to like listening to you talk, or they're not. And that's kind of how it is. That's a lot of guys saying, well, why don't I take off? And, and, and there's guys who I, I really enjoy watching. They haven't taken off uh, because I enjoy watching them, but apparently a vast majority of people don't, and that's just kind of how it is. But I think the biggest mistake people th make is thinking, oh, I'm going to spend a crap ton of money on editing software and multiple camera angles and all this stuff, and they think it's going to make them take off, and it isn't. It's, it isn't. Uh, they, they can't have us understanding their algos. If we did, they wouldn't be able to keep changing the rules, moving the goalposts. You're right, Scott. They definitely do that. Sorry, business daddy. But, um, yeah, I, I don't understand it at all. And they do, they do move the goalposts a lot. But YouTube's been good to me. I, I have, I cannot complain about YouTube. They've been pretty good to me. I do wish they had my stupid join button on right now. I was really hoping to have that on tonight. Now I'm going to have to wait till next week to debut it, and I'm kind of annoyed by that. But uh, other than that, they've been fantastic. Uh, Chris Jaskolski says, I don't know how you manage to put as much content as you do. Well, part of it is um, I've just been... Uh, I just got sucked into it, I guess. I, I, I have a nasty habit of turning hobbies into jobs. That's how my previous business, well, my current business still, I still own it. Um, and I still do a bit with it, but uh, was recumbent bicycles. And that I got passionate about and turned it into a job. And now I'm just kind of doing the same thing with this. And, and I do all right with it. I mean, I'm not, it's not a full-time living by any stretch of the imagination, but luckily I got a job as editor at Knives Illustrated as well through this, because of this. So between the two, you know, I make a full-time living in the knife industry now. So that's what I do. And this isn't work to me. Like, some aspects of Knives Illustrated are work. You know, because I have to edit someone else's article they wrote. And have to corral people and make sure people get paid and all that kind of stuff. But, uh, um, Slicey Dicey isn't work. I never feel like it's work. You know, I have to make time for it sometimes. But once I sit down and the camera goes on, I enjoy every minute of it. I really enjoy making the videos. I enjoy 97% of the comments that I get. Somebody, I can't say it on here, I don't want to get demonetized. Somebody did make a really, they called me a derogatory term that was very funny the other day. But I don't want to say it on here. 
Uh, your stand-up gigs get money, too. Yeah, Sergeant Kong. Yeah, I def- I'd make money doing stand-up, too. Uh, obviously, with the, the global bastard, I haven't made as, as much as I was, but I'm, I, I still do a fair bit. Uh, do you keep a backlog of your videos or just rely on them living on YouTube? Connor Munch says, I have all of them within two, within my old phone and my new phone and my desktop. Um, I have, uh, I've got, I've got every video I ever made. So, Hey Russ, how's it going? Thanks for stopping in. We don't have too much time left, but a lot of people have already jumped off to go see OCD. Uh, post on Instagram. Yeah, I could, I could do that. Oh, post all my videos on Instagram. I'm not going to post all my, I don't know what you're talking about or the, the rude name that I saw. Zachary Schmidt said, let's see the spreadsheets. I might do that someday. I might do that someday. I don't, I don't keep all of those though. I keep all the ones for the current year. So all I have is, is this year. I don't keep all the, the really old ones. You mean the spreadsheets for like what I carry and stuff, my obsessive, crazy stuff? I feel like if I showed those spreadsheets where I keep track of each knife I carry every day, they would be evidence in a trial someday. It just seems like something a psychopath would do. <laughs> Brian Stone says, I uh, got a waypoint that should arrive Wednesday. Thanks for part of your review, so thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Normally people are upset when they make them spend money, but... And when they say that, I always say the same thing. Is I apologize for nothing. Um, but yeah, who keeps a spreadsheet of all the knives they carry? If you don't have a YouTube channel, it's kind of a weird thing to do. I would kind of be creeped out about it if you just did it, like, if you're just a guy and you just did it for fun. I love knives, but man, I, that might weird me out. I've been trying to get more use out of the Spy 27. I've been consciously carrying the Para 3 Lightweight a lot. And it's part of the reason why I got the Para 3 Lightweight in this steel, because I knew I would use it a lot. And man, it's holding up pretty darn good. Um, I'm not doing hardcore cut tests. I'm sure that Cedric Aider or somebody will will do that better than me. Uh, so that's why I don't do those. Uh, but as far as like daily use stuff, I kind of agree with them. I think it's it's S35 good or a little bit better. And it's just it's a really freaking good steal. I'm quite happy with it. And it didn't need it, but I got some new uh whetstones from um from workshop their new whetstone system they have and i sharpened it on that and it went it was it was great it kind of felt it kind of feels a lot like s35vn it really does but supposedly it's, it's going to be a bit cheaper than that so for spider co they're the only ones that can use it so they can say it's cheaper and we'll never know but yeah not bad Um, Walt was looking good. Yeah, he is. He's a good old guy. This thing is just so freaking pretty. Even my wife was like, at first I hand, I like when I first handed it to her, she said, oh my God, this is huge. Like in a disgusted tone. And then she looked at it and she was like, wow, this is really, this is really pretty. She appreciates old things. So the vintage kind of theme does it for her. And uh, yeah. We have a lot of old stuff in our house. If you walked in our house and didn't notice the, the you know, punk rock posters and all the Star Wars stuff around, uh, you would swear we were 85 years old. Like, all our furniture is just ancient and old. And then it's sprinkled, you know, with, uh, you know, with uh, Star Wars pops and, yeah, punk rock posters and and all kinds of stuff. So it's a, we have a weird aesthetic in our house, but it works for us. We like it. Old furniture, obscure pop cultural stuff. And yeah. Live in Buffalo, work as an LEO in Rochester. I just just say, I still don't understand garbage place. Sarge 930. I am totally with you. I'm a Rochester transplant. I call that my hometown, but, um, I was born in the southern tier, but yeah, the garbage plate is disgusting. I don't get it. It's dumb. You guys know what a garbage plate is? It's like our town's like claim to fame food-wise, and it's just ridiculous. I don't know why anyone would eat that. Uh, can you show the lockup of the waypoint? Yeah, I guess. It's 
very specific question. I will flick it out to make sure it's in the, the normal. It's about there. It's completely fine. It's kind of not uncommon for some liner locks, but I've never had it even remotely feel like it was going to fail. It is rounded off. I think that's the thing I have heard people say that, oh, it doesn't have a full lockup because it's, it's rounded off. So it looks different. Um, what's on a garbage plate? It is either hot dogs or hots. Sorry. It's either hots or hamburger patties. Um, on top of home fries, Mac salad, which is really where they lose me. Uh, some sort of meat sauce, like hot meat sauce, like Texas hot sauce or something like that. Onions and ketchup and mustard. All in just one big pile on a plate. And I think they're disgusting. There is one place that made a fancy one that had mac and cheese instead of mac salad. That was tolerable. But, yeah, it's, it's drunk people food. And that's, uh, that's our claim to fame, which I think Rochester's claim to fame, because it's more just kind of upstate New York's claim to fame, but it should be Beef on Weck. Like, Beef on Weck is awesome. Brian Stone says college food. That's exactly what it was. Hot meat sauce. Too easy. Yes, it is. Sounds like what throw up looks like. Yeah, because garbage plate looks the same going in as it does coming out. They're... They're horrid. I don't know why people love them so much. Like, I have eaten them before, but I get them with, like, 90% of the stuff not on it. I'll take two. Don't eat it for taste. <laughs> I, how I eat my, how I get my garbage plates is basically just, like, the meat and the hot meat sauce and the home fries. And that's kind of it. So I just kind of cut everything else. Unless they will do mac and cheese instead of mac salad. I think mac salad is the most... Dis I hate mayonnaise, so I think it's the most disgusting stuff ever. But yeah, they're even different temperatures. I can't eat food that's different temperatures. Chris Jaskolsi says, you're all in poutine country too, right? Yes, I am. I do love me some poutine. Poutine is awesome. We're barely in poutine country here, but... We have a food truck now that's just poutine, and it's amazing. Yeah, mayo is just gross. Spaghetti chili cheese. I have had that, Christopher Wilhelm. I had that, Christoph Wilhelm. I had that in uh, Ohio, and it was pretty good. My old lady has a post for you as well. Well, email it to me, and I, I will take a look at it. Or can I, what, what's that play button? How did you do that? You have a little play button next to your name. Yes, it's the pair of three lightweight. Mayo is the greatest comment on earth blasphemy. I just don't like it. You don't review on the M40-02 yet. I don't know what that is, so I'm going to say no. Poutine is life. I wouldn't go that far, but I do like it a whole lot. Um, how do you guys get that little play button next to your name? I don't know what that is. That's weird. Do a food review. If I do a food review, I know exactly what it would be on. It would be on my love the instant pot. Does anybody else have an instant pot? Oh, it's in the emoji list. Well, I didn't know that. I never do that. An instant pot has like changed my life. It's so good. I will end after my raving about the instant pot. But if you put like a whole roasting chicken in the instant pot, oh my god, it's the best chicken I've ever had in my life. It doesn't look as pretty. It's putting in the oven like it doesn't get as crispy on the outside and stuff. But it is just the juiciest, most amazing chicken I've ever had. It's so good. I've just put like a dry rub on it. And I just cook the chickens separately. And uh, yeah, just put it in the Instant Pot. Because I have a six and a half ounce Instant Pot. So it's like you just got to do the whole fill thing. Uh, better than a normal crock pot. Infinitely better than a normal crock pot. I have a crock pot I still use, but the Instant Pot is just great. It makes a whole chicken supremely well. I have my own special little rub that I use on it, and it then I stuff it, you know, with, like, uh, um, onions and whole garlic cro cloves and uh, 
you know, celery and stuff just to put all the, all the juice through it. And instead of putting water in it, the secret is to make a good instant pot chicken, you put uh, chicken broth in it instead of water. And, oh, it comes out so juicy and so good. Also, I've made a lentil stew in it. And it's great because you don't have to, uh, you don't have to like pre-soak the lentils because it's a pressure cooker. It's basically just a really compressed, uh, it's a computerized pressure cooker, basically. And, uh, oh, it's so good. Uh, Zach Stuff says, what is your special meat rub? Uh, left hand. That's a solid joke. I'm, I'm just going to say. I should probably just end on that. I should probably just say thank you, good night, <laughs> and walk away on the meat rub joke. Yeah, I'm going to. I think I'm just going to walk away on that one. Uh, because, uh, yeah, we got uh, OCD for EDC is up. If you guys still want to keep chatting about knives, I'm going to pop over there as well. And I hope you guys have enjoyed this, <laughs> even though it went completely off the rails at the end. And thank you guys so much for participating in the quiz show. I'm going to try and do one of those once a month. And, yeah, if the, the new join button works well, I'm going to be doing two of these live shows a week. So prepare yourselves for that. Hope you guys have enjoyed this. I've been Brian. Have a good one.